Prepare yourself for a sprawling discussion on just about anything, where critical thinking meets pop culture in a collision of mind-bending proportions. Please secure all neurons and prepare for full frontal cortex. It's time for Incoherent Ramblings. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Incoherent Ramblings. This is Joey Shamel, Paul Hottinger, Kale Anderson, and Earl Jores. And today we're going to be talking about something very exciting, monumental excitement. Well, oh, it's monumental achievements. Right, Kale, is that the best way to put it? Monumental projects. 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 Because some of them yeah. haven't been accomplished yet. Got it. Okay. And so this is episode, where are we at? We're at 37? 38. 38. 38. R038. Oh, yes. my goodness gracious. We just celebrated one year of podcasting. Yay. Woo. Yeah. Uh, it was exciting. We went out to dinner and everything. So maybe you'll hear a little special about that. Maybe. Yeah. Or maybe not. Oh, probably. Yeah, yeah, so. One day. It'll it's possible. Fun. Remember, you can email us at uh, show at uh, <laughs> imrambling.com. <laughs> and how, we did how get. How apropos to read it that way. <laughs> yes. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and we did get an email from John Jores, our first official kind of email. Yay. Again, coincidence, no relation. No, it's your brother. <laughs> oh, okay. J O O. Hold on, let me find the the letter. So uh, this Uh, was. I was going to wonder if you were going to remember it. I I thought it was so prepared. My ears have not stopped bleeding since episode. (laughs) (laughs) He says, "I think I heard Joey say you never get any emails." So I thought I'd cheer you up, especially since I'm on the path to be the primary monkey wrench heckler. But seriously, I sent an email a while back and didn't get a reply. Are you sure the emails are getting through, or is it just me? Well, they weren't for a while. Yeah. So that was that April our, emails, our email didn't ex- is, exist. No <laughs> doubt it was a wise sp- spam blocker that filters anything with Jaws in the address out. Believe me, I know. <laughs> what else filters Jaws out? I what are you no doing that people are filtering? You know, yeah. you know what, though? Actually, I have Jaws.com, and it kind of makes sense because... Um, I've had like weird Chinese websites oh. generate random email addresses at George.com and send them out as spams. And then mm. I wind up being, I wind up, my domain winds up black holed on a lot of mail servers now. So Speaking of mail hole. Mail what? <laughs> You know mail, black, wait, never mind. black holes on mail <laughs> servers? <laughs> like waiters? <laughs> like an olive garden or something? <laughs> When you said waiters, all of a sudden I saw somebody in rubber boots and shit. I don't know. Wow, it's, it's a, worse. It's the semantic <laughs> episode. Uh, so, John, thanks for emailing us. We yes. appreciate we it. We have no reply. And the <laughs> first email apparently is lost. Your because. prize is in the mail. I hope everything is going well up in Northern California. Uh, hey, he's in, well, I'm not going to say where he's at, but he's <laughs> not far away. Not but he moved there. Far. No, but he moved he back. He moved there for, yeah. He's what? Back. Something like that. Yeah. We will reveal no more. You're going to disappoint. <laughs> you're going to make John think I never talk about him. No. You, you think he's still who? It's time for the free ramble. Yeah, free ramble. Okay, as we started last week, we have our four individual segments. So we'll start with mine, which is I changed the name. It was real last time. Last time it was the bit tent, which is stupid. So now it's the fun zone with Joey. <laughs> All right, so today I'm going to talk about this letter that was sent. That was from from John. From John. (laughs) Okay, man trolls his jerk neighbor in the most passive-aggressive way possible. It's from an Australian, so I'll try to do my Australian voice. That sounded like a bar joke. Hello, dear neighbor. (laughs) Dude, what are you, a dreadnought? (laughs) That's your British voice. Oh, sorry, that is. Come (laughs) up! Australian is up more, though. It's like, crikey! Hello? No, that's not right either. No. Damn it. Uh, I'm Crocodile Dundee. <laughs> no, you're Keanu Reeves. <laughs> that's you are. Yes, that looks I'm, like Keanu Reeves. I'm Australian. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, I'm Australian. <laughs> Dear neighbor, 
Due to your new terror watch floodlight, I'm not gonna do this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Due to your new terror watch floodlight <laughs> shining through our bedroom window like a small but intense sun, I've removed the lamp and placed it in your letterbox. Regards, David. And then he has a little picture that's labeled with A and shows the light. It says, "Dear God, what is happening? Is that a floodlight?" Then B, our bedroom window, and then C. There's just a dog written on there. It says a dog. Okay, so then he gives the email, and this is uh, from a neighbor. I received your note, but cannot. But you can't go onto other people's properties and take things. That's trespassing. Masson Newton is, I guess that's the name of where they live, <laughs> is a wooded area, and I installed the light for security. It's a safety issue. I can't help it if the light goes across the road. Close your curtains if it bothers you. He responds, hello, Justin. Thank you for your email. While I accept that curtains are usually the key to, co to community accord, in this instance, they would need to be constructed of eight thick inch lead sheeting. Last night, my curtains closed uh, and the bedside light off. I read a book. Wearing sunglasses under a blanket. <laughs> <laughs> Though I'm convinced that blinding local fauna is the best solution, I do understand that heightened need for security living in a wooden area such as the gated community of Mass Newton demands. Having formerly lived my entire life in Australia, I am unfamiliar with much of the local wildlife, but I did see my first raccoon last week. <laughs> I stepped oh outside to have a cigarette and the raccoon sitting less than five feet away beside an upended bin eating the remains of Domino's Artesian Tucson salami pizza hissed at me. <laughs> Surprised, I threw myself backwards, rolled several times toward the door and sprang to my feet, holding the welcome mat over my head to appear a bit taller. <laughs> Sometime during the roll spring mat maneuver, probably during the roll part, as it was over gravel and I was wearing shorts and a thin t-shirt, so I had to take it slow, the raccoon left. Which probably isn't as exciting as the story as it should be, but this isn't Borneo and I'm not Jack London. I did see a snake the other day, though. I picked up a stick to poke it, which turned out to be another snake. Jumping back in panic, I threw it away, <laughs> but our dog was, thought I was playing fetch, and I had to run and jump over the creek to get away from it. Oh my god. As such, this weekend, I intended to use a canister of poison gas in my yard with an industrial fan behind it. I can't help if some of the gas gets across the road. <laughs> Holy crap. Okay, so then the other guy replies, is this meant to be a threat? <laughs> Put something up in your window if you don't like the light. We've had five years before you even moved into the neighborhood and got along perfectly fine with Ryan, who lived on the property behind you. We went to his barbecue and I loaned him our mower. Along with our, uh, we get along with our other neighbors. I don't know why you people, what people do in your con this country or in your country, we don't go onto other people's property and touch their stuff. Dear Justin, in my country, Tarawak globes are reserved for police helicopter chases and warning sailors of hazardous shoals. <laughs> And I'm going to end there. If you want to see the rest of it, you'll have to look it up. Yeah. But it's show notes, show notes. freaking hilarious. And we'll put it in the show notes. So. <laughs> that, that was he should put a joke. mirror. Wow. That was now good. I know why you didn't back. want to limit the time on yeah, the Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that was my fun zone. <laughs> now we got Paul's Word of the Week. Oh, God, I thought you said wood. <laughs> oh, well, I'm glad it's a word. That's wood of the day, baby. Okay. <laughs> this week's word of the week. Are you ready? It's called. It's, no, the word not. is minivan. Nice. A minivan. Uh, I remember when they were going to make a U.S. stamp with a minivan on it to represent the '80s. Do you remember that? Yeah. The the minivan. Vote huh? on a minivan. Okay, yeah. I think. I don't know. That that seems to have something to do with pedophilia. <laughs> You're, you're always the first to go there. <laughs> Me? It could be. But it's like, you know. Uh, how about it's a... Well, minivan, kids, you know. Right. I, I have no idea. Yeah, you I got could... anything? Um, Maybe it's, uh, you know, uh, an 80s rock band with dwarfism. Close. Mini, sex with minivan, little people. Minivan Halen. <laughs> close, close. Uh, okay, minivan what? is similar to the Shocker. The act of putting two fingers in the vagina. Oh no, the minivan is similar to Shocker. It is the minivan is the act of putting two fingers in the vagina and a fist up the ass. It's called the minivan because it fits two in the front and five in the back. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Shoot! Wow! <laughs> Crikey! Oh. <laughs> we have to follow this. Yeah. Oh <laughs> no, that was Paul's word of the week. Uh, yeah. Say your outro. Word. <laughs> with Paul. Oh <my> <laughs> uh, we have tick tock tick tock 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 whatever what the fuck. Oh. 
All right. The Can tech I get a talk. Here? Was it? I have a mini. You're microphone. asking us a question. Oh, right. It's, All right. It was so, questions. Daryl's qu- uh, questions from Daryl. Okay. In the tech talk, phys- physicists say that they have teleported energy without a limit of distance. So you know how they've been entangling uh, particles and then being able to teleport uh, the the particle positions once they're entangled. Mm-hmm. Well, now they say that they can actually teleport the uh, energy signature so they could actually create energy at any distance. Did they do it? Funky. Yes, they did it. A team of physicists... They had to get up to 88 miles per hour. And then- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was it. So they... So they, wait, wait, does that mean like I can, I can power my uh, whatever from my phone from like... Sending energy. Hey, to could it? I plug into your outlet to recharge and I just hold my phone out? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or is, shoot. Is that what they're talking like about? Like havoc? you can send energy, like yeah. you can power stuff. Um, let me what, let me there? take let me take a guess here though, because okay. knowing the way that uh, science is often reported. Oh, it is theoretical at this point. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Because the thing the thing is, yeah, I figure this is one of those things that like for now can be maybe theorized or done in a lab, but even at that, it's not going to be practical for anything yet if ever right it's not like they're going to be able to uh like create energy here Mm -hmm. and have it like a robot on the other side of our galaxy and power that robot by teleporting the energy there oh so that's probably not what's going to happen but like daryl said it I, I thought it was a really interesting concept, though, yeah, of right. actually yeah, yeah. being able to change the energy signature of whatever particles you've got going. So, mm-hmm. cool. anyway. Okay, Daryl, it's your turn. Wait, wait, wait. Booger's up. Booger's on. Wait, hey, I got he is. Booger, you there? I'm here, Booger. Come in, come in. Right. Hey, the delay is with them, too. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we have found Booger. He lives. He's alive. He got blown up. He didn't even know. He's back in South Carolina. Got it this time. Yeah, right. Wow. North Carolina. Oklahoma. Damn it. He's <laughs> in Oklahoma now. Yes. Oh, that's right. This Oklahoma. isn't fair. I was only <laughs> saying Oklahoma before, and he wasn't there. Oh, well, well. You know. we're, okay, where are you know. Okay, where are you now, Booger? I, uh, as a, my rump right now is resting in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Mm. Where's the rest of you resting? <laughs> <laughs> On his rump. Wouldn't you like to know? Yeah, I would. <laughs> anyway, so uh, let's continue. Daryl was doing his pre-ramble. What's your uh, question? Time for questions from Daryl. Okay, so this is a simple question. How unlucky is Daryl? Because I started mining something called Lotto Coin. And the idea with this is that I can mine about one or two blocks a day solo mining. And it has a randomized payout. That's why it's called Lotto Coin. You get a payout anywhere from 256 coins to, uh, and it's multiplied by a random number of one to. For those of you who have no idea what he's talking about, you can make electronic money by using your computer. That's right. Just think of it that way. And there are a lot of different coins out there. So yeah. this is one where there are a lot of coins. So each time you mine a, a lot, lot, you're going to get a random payout from 256 <laughs> to 65,384. <laughs> So the median is about 32,000 coins, and I would figure that I would consider it a lotto win if you mine a block that's over that median threshold, and it's a loss if you mine less than that. So thus far, I've mined 10 blocks, all of which have been usually far below the 32,000 median. And this is the same statistically as flipping a coin, and I'm saying, like, I'm rooting for heads, and someone flips a coin and does tails 10 times in a row, all losses. Damn. That would only happen one in every 1,024 tries. So my question is, how unlucky is Daryl Jors? So let me explain what really <laughs> happened here. Daryl forgot that his portion was supposed to be a question, and he had this <laughs> other thing he was going to say. Yeah. And when we said, Daryl, you, your segment is to how, do a question. He how forgot. much is Daryl skirting the rules? Daryl. <laughs> so let's. I think that's it for the pre ramble pre ramble pre ramble was a pre ramble <laughs> So wait, how unlucky were you? Was it like I was pretty damn unlucky. Yeah. I would only be that unlucky one out of every thousand twenty four attempts. In other words, yeah. this is probably a scam, and Daryl got sucked in. Hey, <laughs> well, that, actually, that, that would depend how much Dar- how much did money did Daryl have to put in order to play. Oh, I'm mining it with my GPUs, so I'm using energy to do it. Electricity. Oh, what? yeah. And who's paying the electric bill? You or somebody else? Uh, that would be the split. <clears throat> 
my friend. That's the neighbor's extension yeah, cord. <laughs> no <matter>. neighbor's extension. <laughs> like, no, don't tell my neighbors. Yeah. Electricity, electricity. <laughs> Likely the investment on your part was probably going to be incredibly minimal, even if you only only got like one or two coins a day. So I don't think it's going to really be a, all, all in all. Of course, and at the same time, it depends on how do you measure lucky. I say I, I'd go ahead and if I'll pitch you, and I'll say, to, Daryl, no matter what, you're lucky. You don't have to answer his question. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm saying I was pretty unlucky. Dude. That's what I'm saying. All right, so today's topic is going to be Monumental Project. Ah, this is Cal's topic from, uh, we've actually put it off a little bit, so we finally got to it, which is nice. And Booger's here, so it's just like old times, tear. <laughs> okay, no, the so. The tear was from the gas earlier. Uh, yeah, back. no kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. <laughs> gas, gas, gas. Hey, whoa. <laughs> okay. That's so, right hey, over hey, me. Sorry. <laughs> Don't do that. So, okay, let's get started. Uh, 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 you want to do anything, say anything to introduce this topic before we get started? Well, it's just I think it's really cool and interesting that we as a species want to create things that are going to last for a long, long time uh, for future generations. Unlike cell phones, computers, gaming systems, cars. Uh, my ass. Yeah. And Joey's ass. And Joey's ass. Okay, but, so right, but describe cool. what a monumental project is to you. Oh, all right. Well, what a monumental project is anything that uh, takes uh, a great amount of time or energy or most quite often both something that everybody will look at and go, "Wow, how like the pyramids?" You know, like, "Wow, how did they create those?" I had no idea what he said. I, I missed it too. <laughs> I was going to say the same thing, but that, he beat me to it. All right. <laughs> say it again, damn it. What? I don't know. Uh, no, what? <laughs> you can only guess. Hey, it smells like cotton. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, All right. right. All right. So, um, anyway, let's get started. We've got five oh, minutes. Oh, wait, Booger, you don't know about this. Uh, we have a new format. Have you listened to any episodes since you've been on? You bastard. Um, not completely, just partials. Oh, actually, but you wouldn't know anyway because we haven't published any of these. He just, so. He's yeah, just been watching right. the, similar to the, the money shots. Ramblings. Yeah, it's that, uh, sim a similar to Random Ramblings where we give ourselves five minutes for each topic. So when the bell rings, we are done with that to that individual topic unless you use your extends. <laughs> it's not funny. It's... it's how we do it. You'll see as we go along. These are subtopics within the general topic. <laughs> All right, I'll stop. All right. Okay. You no better than that. So yeah, let's I go know. ahead and start the uh, timer, Daryl, and we'll go with the first topic. Timer started. Ancient projects. We're talking pyramids, Great Wall of China, City of Petra, 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 Petra. Petra. All of them. Uh, wait, wait. Anchor. And Angkor Wat. Aliens. 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 Well, that yeah. Explains it. Next topic. Okay. <laughs> okay, we need to link to that picture of the dude from. Uh, He's always on the Science Channel. Oh, Ancient yeah. Ancient aliens. Uh, <laughs> Ancient <laughs> aliens. Like Brian something. Or... Uh, so who is our sponsor? Okay, our sponsor is Fortress Maximus because he is a Transformer who is indeed a monumental creation. Maximus. <laughs> and Fortress Maximus. Wait, wasn't it Metroplex? Or Metroplex. Well, Fortress Maximus the, the, new, the new Metroplex? Because his head right. came off. Okay. Yeah, so we'll go yeah. Fortress He always Maximus. had a guy in his head. Spike. He always, is he going to be in the new Transformers movie? No, probably no. not. That's Grimlock. All right, let's get started. Back to the timer. Go ahead. Timer going. Okay, we're talking pyramids. We're talking Angkor Wat. We're talking Great Wall of China, and we're talking the City of Petra. Right. So, um, pyram we all know about the pyramids. See, Grimlock was a monumental. No, Grimlock's not our sponsor. Oh, damn. Yeah, go back to sleep. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the pyramids are pretty amazing. I, I mean, the pyramids are still around today, thousands of years old, and they were made without alien technology, supposedly. Right. So that's I, I'm. Or, I would agree with that. Well, they were master. I mean, they knew geometry and stuff, right? Right. I mean, they, and they, they, because they they, had, they aligned them exactly and well. Knowing is half the battle when it comes to moving around true. twenty ton stones. And yeah. until yeah. about. I don't know, within the last 20 years when we actually have figured out how they made them, uh, it was a big mystery. How could they have made them? And But now we know it was pretty 
easy to do with, with their technology that they had at the time. And it's amazing that sometimes things like uh, monumental constructions are done from like egotism. You know, it was the yeah. Yeah. it's the pharaohs going. Uh, I want a big building well, over there. Well, they were um, supposedly gods, you know, so the, this monuments to the living gods that are ruling the land. Yeah. And they wanted cases. wanted to be remembered. Right. Definitely. And also they believed in such a rich afterlife that you have to, like, pack for the journey. Mm -hmm. So you get all you your slaves your horses, buried right. with you and, you know, the cotton that they picked. And <laughs> <laughs> they were actually, it's, I was watching this thing It's saying, interesting that around the world <laughs> that all the similar pyramids arose at uh, around the same time you know what's sure. in, what's also interesting about that I, I remember hearing something that was saying that pyramids are, are what they ended up being but a lot of times they were just trying to make large hills or something i, I forget what it yeah. was but they they figured out why pyramids are all over the place because it's just kind of what evolves when you try to make a large structure when you don't have like the ability to construct uh like we do today yeah, because it's yeah. uh, it's something where you um don't have to have the structural rigidity to build right, straight up. That's why yeah. there aren't skys ancient skyscrapers. Right, exactly. And a lot of people say, oh, it's because the aliens, they went to different co countries. It's like, right. No, it's because that's just it's how just it evolved. Sensible. They don't realize how, how many slaves, how many people it, they use. I mean, they weren't to trying to it. emulate giant piles of crap. They might have been. <laughs> so good to have you back, Booger. <laughs> it's possible. Uh, okay, what is uh, what is Angkor, Angkor Wat? It sounds familiar, well, but... there's This will go into Angkor Wat, um, but... What it is is that a lot of these projects, especially the ancient ones, uh, had to do with religion. And that's what Angkor Wat actually means, uh, that it's the city of, I think, city of God or something like that. It was It's a huge temple in Cambodia. And they created this whole island, floating island, to put their, uh, their temple on. You know, I'm going to make and a moratorium the, the where you cannot play with figures during the podcast because that's all you guys do when we're trying to have a podcast, when there's a freaking figure. Okay, well, nobody else noticed it. No, because they can't see it. Exactly. Okay. Um, so. so wasn't this, okay, it was a floating island. Yeah. Made of stone, dirt. Yeah. And all that, right? Right. Of white gold, it floated and golden, on a turtle, and it had gold. Then they like uh, do the whole thing in gold. So yeah, they go uh, roofs and they, stuff. So it's it, like they put gold plating good. on all of the uh, spires of Angkor Wat. Is there anything left over from it? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yes. it's still yeah. there completely, oh. and, and it, it takes like days. They, to go through they refound it because the jungle kind of grew over. It's it. like Disney World, and then yeah. they they take it. Uh, Disney probably they cleaned owns it. off all the. All of the well, uh, jungle off of it. Now you can see. Is there like a video we could go? Oh yes, we will link to it. Uh, but the there's even like amazing. wood, wood nice beams and stuff that's, really thin, that's still there. Who's playing with themselves on my video? Xander. So uh, the Great Wall of China. Yes, is didn't that work was, very well. That was necessity, though. They were they were blocking it didn't out. Work very well. Well, the first emperor of China created this to go keep it? the Han, uh, the Huns, and the. You're uh, not familiar uh, with it. It's uh, very very. It's long. huge. <laughs> it's very, it's very, and you very cannot long. see it from space. No, you cannot. No, you can't. Wait. Um, and what's Joey, quit, Joey, quit touching yourself on my video. No, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, City of Petra. But they Petra. used. Well, go ahead, Great Wall. Well, I liked on, on the video it explains how they how they made it, of how um, they would pack mud. <laughs> <laughs> they're mud packers. They're mud packers. <laughs> Fudge dirt packers. <laughs> and they would just spend all this time like pounding, pounding, it, pounding it down, pounding it down. <laughs> and right. just they, they tried it uh, using like a village or someone was doing it. Uh, and it took there like we go. There's our bell. days just to do like Are you gonna extend a few square your... feet. The city of Petra, Petra, is that all that in the bag of chips? Nah, I, we can move on. It's cool. It, it, right. Watch uh, Indiana Jones, and then you can... Oh, yeah. I know what it is. It's yeah. the statue yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah. Where Indy yeah. runs it. That yeah. is pretty cool. All right, next, we're going to talk about the more recent, but still in the past, stuff. Like modern, <laughs> modern, modern, modern Marvels. Modern Marvels. I like that. That's good. Modern or Marvels. So, like, okay. uh, we're, we're talking about the uh, Mount Rushmore, Statue of Liberty, Eiffel Tower, things of that nature. Uh, I always found the Statue of Liberty very, uh, very interesting because it was a present from France and they shipped it across the ocean and then we put it up and it became such a thing. And then it was like bronze at first. So it does, didn't even look the way it does now. It was all brown copper looking or something. Yeah, but she still had It's boobs. copper. You're such a perv. <laughs> She's a harbor chick. 
<laughs> well, Harbor chick. <laughs> I like that. So, and I always thought that was interesting because it's such a, it's so big and and juicy. <laughs> so it's, it's not. It was bronze, not copper. Or copper, no, it's I copper. Yeah, copper. Yeah, I that's copper. It, that's why. It, uh, that's why it looks copperish. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's why, why you're green. Yeah, that's how come it has that patina. You can now. do that experiment with yeah. a penny, by the way. Clean a penny off, and you see what happens. Not your knees, but yeah, correct. Uh, uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, uh, Central Liberty, I thought was cool. What was uh? What else was it? Uh, Mount Rushmore. Kelly, you know a lot, a lot about Mount Rushmore, don't you? Well, the, I Mount- saw the movie Rushmore. <laughs> it was also it was the base of Team America. Yeah, that's true. F yeah. <laughs> What, now it came out. Did they come out of every one of them? Come out one of the heads. Is that I think what so it was? The mouth came down. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, now the guy lizard lives there. That's true. Oh, remember the time the Jelly Jiggler was going to dump a whole bunch of jelly over Mount Rushmore? <laughs> yeah, thanks for this. <laughs> no one else will get that. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> Uh, and uh, what about? Isn't ah, there a secret a middle sec- finger to our audience? Yeah, okay. So isn't there a secret <laughs> passageway somewhere in? There? Well, there's there's what they call the vault, and it's behind the heads, uh, <laughs> the, into the mountain behind it, and they were actually going to dig it back and make it this big uh, vault where you could all this uh, cool stuff from the past they were going to store there, but then they gave up the, that and now. Disney. So it's going to be like a time capsule? For sort of it? like, Is it yeah. true that on the other side of the hill they carved all the butts? That butts? I yeah. knew you were going to do that. <laughs> no, actually they didn't. They didn't even finish their original idea on Mount Rushmore where they were going to uh, carve actually the upper whole upper bodies of them. Hmm. But uh, really? that's why if you look at George Washington, the beginning <clears throat> of his clothes is hmm. there. Yeah. But uh, I thought that that's where the secret tunnel that led to Disneyland was supposed to end up. Oh, now that would have been interesting. <laughs> why why did they do the Mount Rushmore? What was the, was it? Uh, it was, uh, was it a centennial celebration? Something like was that? Was it backed by the government? Uh, um, it was, yes. it was backed, but it wasn't financed mostly from the government. It was oh. actually private donations a lot. Well, it's amazing how some of these projects, I don't know which specific ones you might have some insight to this, but I know that like some things that are around were, um, like built for a world fair and they were intended to just be up for a That's couple true. years. In Small fact, world. I kind of think the Eiffel Tower has a history. It is. That. I was yeah. going to ask, what's yeah. the deal with the Eiffel Tower? That it, seem... it was part of the Paris World Fair sometime right. like 1890, something like that. And I, I think they would have been very shocked to know it's still standing today. Yeah, because it actually was built so it could be taken apart and yeah. moved. Moved around. Really? Like, yeah. Were they going to showcase it? Like, yeah, it was just... Places? Hmm. You know, it was kind of really like uh, Stark. Big, yeah. the, what was that? Stark. The Stark uh, Expo. Oh. Expo. Oh. giant TV <laughs> Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, that's interesting. A lot of these things that when they originally put them up, everybody hates them. And now it becomes the like center of the idea of the, the city. board loves it. Yeah. Yeah. Same thing when they, I guess they did the... Uh, 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 the Sydney Opera House. People mm-hmm. hated that one. Do you want to know what an Eiffel Tower really is? Yes. Go ahead, Paul. An Eiffel tell- Tower is a threesome with two guys and a girl where one guy is hitting oh. it from behind <laughs> and the other guy is getting a yes. bad job. The guys are high-fiving <laughs> over the girl to make an Eiffel Tower shape. Wait a second. All right. Hold on. Guys at you the bottom? Have n- you will not believe some of the Eiffel Tower stories I learned when I was in the military, oh. too. Oh, man. Wait, wait. Oh, girls on the bottom? Guys? One, no, one girl on the bottom, two guys. One's on one, yeah. one, the face. One yeah, the face. yeah, yeah. Okay, we kind of figured it yeah. out. Let's yeah. move on. Okay. <laughs> check the show notes. Well, don't, don't that check the show notes. That definitely sounds like a monumental project. <laughs> <laughs> Far more monumental than I would. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> that was a bonus word. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for bonus word of the week. And then we forgot. No, that was that, that was, was it. Well, that I'm trying to think. Is there anything else that we did that's not on the list? Is like a ring. All right. Bell. All right. Uh, yes, let's Giant move on. Bell Monumental Project. Uh, next, let's talk about the very modern great projects that have already been that have, that have been finished. So we're talking about the internet. Well, the internet's not finished, but the basics behind it is uh, the Human Genome Pro- Project, the Dubai Islands, wait, wait, wait. Uh, just, and even what, Las what? Vegas. What constitutes finishing the internet? I knew he was going to go there. Yeah, I, I, you knew <laughs> he was going to go there. When it breaks! It's done, damn it! Okay, it's done. <laughs> That's what I say. It's well, okay. Any of these things are well established. How about that? Yeah, okay, all right. Okay. We'll go with that. Fine, okay. It had already been ruled a long time ago that the end of the internet re- was reached when the last person got the last website, clownpenis.fart. <laughs> Dude, that was going to be mine! 
mine. <laughs> All right, so uh, well, let's go on to the internet. The internet is quite a monumental project that I don't think was planning to be as big as it is. Yeah, it definitely was started out just being for the universities, mm-hmm. you know, to communicate with each other. And the government, in case there's a uh, nuclear and because the university has had the big computers and right. uh, personal computers were not That was really one of the reasons they could yet. actually do but it. But it's probably one of the first monumental projects that, that has been just kind of sent out into the world and then evolved almost on its own yeah. with the use of all the people. Because anybody who did anything on the internet uh, helped to form it. And actually, this podcast is part of that. Oh hell yeah! Well, it's, it's, <laughs> well, wouldn't it be like the 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 protocols? I mean, you get the TC was it TCP/IP? Yeah, you know, they actually get an actual protocol to where then everything is talking the same language. Right, that's what's that's what's important. Without that, you just have right standards. You know, different right, internet, different internets all over the place. Right. It's a platform that. Um, well, that was one of the earliest problems with networking is that. Um, every machine that was made generally had a different way of encoding its data. So even if you had some sort of storage medium, you couldn't, even if the drives had identical hardware, like they use like eight inch floppy drives or whatever, the data format was different from one kind of machine to another. So you you couldn't even port data properly. So uh, networking was very instrumental in setting up this is the packet structure, this is how you encapsulate your data, and then suddenly you can send information from machine to machine, regardless of what OS they're running. or It's whatnot. like magic! Yeah. The gathering. Uh, what about the Human Genome Project? Remember when, I remember them saying that's going to take like 50, 100 years, and then they finished it in like five or something. Nine, was it? Because they didn't, they like didn't yeah. uh, account for Moore's Law. Right. What's They're the like, you know, at the project? current rate of processing, it's going to take this long, but then it doubles yeah. every 18 and months. And I just saw something uh, online recently that said now that uh, with their new processing, that they'll, it's like a thousand times faster. Well, I also think they do it privately now for 23andMe. They yeah. can analyze your... Yeah, you can actually get yeah. it done privately. Oh, that's what it was. It, it's down to a thousand, thousand dollars. Oh, right, right. To get that's your own personal was. private yeah. genome. Yeah, dude, you have that's your cool. genome sequence, thousand bucks. Right. Oh, that's nice. Mm-hmm. That's and you know they're thinking in a few years it'll be like a hundred, and then it's going to yeah. be ten. So what's yeah. the so what's the advantage your, to the genome? For right, your, it'll be like you get your, your insurance ETT home genome genome test. You know? Are we yeah. are we seeing advantages of the genome? Like are things that that are happening in healthcare because of that? Yeah, your insurance rates go up. Oh, listen, <laughs> Have we, <laughs> have we seen anything? Because they yeah, said it was the, just going to revolutionize. Because what they've been able to do is sequence some of the uh, abnormal genes and figure out why that they are, why it causes the abnormality, and so it allows us to help correct it. So a lot of things that are on the cusp of being realized are because of yeah. the human genome. Got it. Uh, again, those uh, really things where I think it was. Like quick. Huh? Uh, 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 you're, you're cutting oh, out, your, your, your connection's been terrible thus far. Yeah. It's hard to... Why didn't you contact us on my laptop, you booger? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I would have still been using the same Wi-Fi connection either way. Do you think you could try to um, connect to Joey's... Uh, or, like, hang out with Joey instead? No. Yeah, okay, I'll try like that on, Like on a computer? Yeah. Thanks. So that was good the, that we're trying to really... Uh, understand the genome and, and being able to uh, help uh, Just live longer so we can go live stuff. on an island somewhere. Like oh, the what? islands of Dubai! Uh, you guys <laughs> cut me off. What? Sorry. Well, I was going to say that I think that the, acted like we don't the, do genome, that. the genome <laughs> stuff is a little overreported. Like it's going to be some miracle thing. But it's uh, it is valuable. Don't get me wrong. But I think that like it was trumped up to be something that is not like just because we know your genome, we know exactly what amulet you're going to get. No, it puts you in a percentage bracket. Like, you're yeah. this likely to get this kind of cancer or whatever. And look at, and then, all, like, Angelina Jolie chopped her boobs off because of that uh, percentage. Right, right. So, all I can tell you is that. It's a loss um, to humanity, I tell you that. Okay. For so, me, if, if, I, if, I can, if I can give you, if you can give me $1,000, I'll give you my DNA. I'll just send you my underwear. <laughs> what are you from Predator 2? <laughs> No, but he, he looks like just... So, Dubai. Yeah. <laughs> the islands of Dubai. Yes. So, what so, do they make them out of? I mean, is sand. it just landfill? Oh, it's just sand? It's, they dredge up... <laughs> sand. 
I want to extend because I want to know more about the damn islands of Dubai. All right, Joey's extends. So, so they how do they get the islands? Because at at the place where they're at near shore, it's shallow comparatively. Mm -hmm. So what they're doing is is they're taking sand from one place. They're Sucking it up into a barge, bringing it over, and then shooting it with water down onto the place where they want to create an island. They just keep doing it until there's an island there. And then the island, they're they're shaping it to look like things you said. One's a palm tree, and right. one's palm the, the, the continents yeah. of the United States of the world. Well, no, the world. <laughs> <laughs> the United States of the world. Oh, yes. <laughs> we know Joey is political. <laughs> 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 Uh, so Soon we will rule the entire It's like watching X Files with the Smoking Man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got to take a picture. It was like, all I see is the blue Booger light. Just, Booger just became, yeah. Uh, the Smoking man. man, Cancer Man from the X Files. Like, he doesn't want it. I remember the extend is only two minutes. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, so uh, is it all tropical? Is that what. what yeah, yeah. Like and it's, uh, what do you call it? So the rich people can uh, basically buy their own little island. Got it. Like one of the. Uh, one of, At the end of the Palm Jumeirah. Uh, the company that make, made Atlantis the uh, the resort, <laughs> resort uh-huh. they built another one there in yes. Dubai. That's so, cool. That was pretty cool. But with the end of the time, maybe we should talk about Las Vegas because a lot oh, of cool Viva Las Vegas. Has that been is made awesome. There. I mean, they built that really tall stratosphere thing there. <laughs> yeah, well. It's just eighteen hundred feet, right? It's it's a place Sorry. where you can really take fantasy and make it a reality. I wish Disney would would like make a kids thing there with like themed rooms and stuff. That would be so awesome. Because a lot. Of Man, how many guys have you been on gambling? The that, Vegas is adult? that's that Disney World. Disney World. I bet the kids come to Vegas. Yeah, that's why they made Circus Circus. Right. <laughs> that failed. Yeah. No, that was... no, actually, that's still doing pretty good. Just don't get a room there. Yeah, the jizz stains on the side. <laughs> We stayed there. It was horrible. It was yeah, horrible. everybody in that horrible. stays in certain circumstances is just terrible. All right. Yeah. Lux is awesome. Okay. Let's move to the present. Okay, it's so... like living on the set of Morgan These Mindy. are monumental projects that are in... Process. Process at this moment. And the one that Kale has been to... You went there, right? Yes. I and did. it's often talked about that I never knew about is the Crazy Horse Monument. Right. And the Crazy Horse Monument, I think, is probably Speaking our of Vegas, it's modern a day... Amazing project because they're carving an entire mountain. And how massive this is is that you can take all of the heads of Mount Rushmore and put them in just Crazy Horse's head. Wow, that's how big Crazy Horse is. Now, how's the funding going? Because I remember when you were talking about before they were having problems with the funding for it. Right. Well, the good thing is is that uh, a lot of private donors, rich, very rich donors, have uh, contributed. So it's moving forward. And uh, also, uh, I think it was John Deere uh, helped them out a lot by donating a bunch of machinery that allows them to uh, uh, move the rubble and all of that. I have that. a question. So are the How donors... does one carve something that large? Is it, you know, do you get a carving knife out or a spatula? It's something you would like. It's called explosives. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. I, Actually, heard, I heard one go off under the table earlier. <laughs> We didn't hear it. We just smelled it. Oh, yeah, but it's it. that's actually how they learned that uh, technique making Mount Rushmore, and okay. so they've moved it over and made it even better. Shape charges so they can uh, not damage the head, which is already carved and, and finished. And now they're working on making the horse's head, which is uh, going to be amazing. And it's 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 uh, crazy horse riding on a horse, right? Correct. Oh man. So the question is, Booker how, down, how Booker many, down, Booker again. How many Indian casinos are contributing? As right, a, and how many will be located in the mountain? <laughs> Nickels or quarters? Yeah, if he doesn't pick up Walgreens, is calling again. Oh my gosh! You so, know. So okay. So wait, what's the timeline though? Like what? Well, that's the thing is, at? they're not saying it. the guy started doing this. I think forty years ago. Oh damn! Yeah. And the head is just finished, and they've been moving so much. Uh, well, the original the guy died, right? Is his son that yeah. took over? Yeah, K- Korsky, I believe his Ooh, name looks is better. something like that. Uh, but yeah. yeah, actually, it's his children. His wife's still alive, Ruth, and she's kind of like the head of of the project. And then her children. They had quite a few children, and most of them are actually working on the monument, uh, and also all the the. Uh, buildings and the Indian University uh, that they've made there. And so actually there's uh, Native Americans are going to going to school at the Crazy Horse uh, Monument That's area. That's cool. Which is cool. 
And so what else? We're going to use this as a as a way to teach uh, Native mm-hmm. American history. Yeah, yeah, exactly, is, uh, exactly. They want to preserve, right. yeah. like they have museum of a lot of Native American items mm-hmm. from the past, and uh, to preserve them and to keep their heritage alive. A lot of that was done so. What's this the same kind of work Kamala was trying to do? <laughs> what's uh, what's this malaria project? <laughs> Wait, what? Matreya project, right? <laughs> oh, okay. Essentially, uh, what that is kindness. is that what loving kindness. Yes, loving kindness. They're they're going to uh, well, make go to the a, video on our show notes a, and drinking games. What? Oh, well, I mean, you got to take a shot every time they say loving kindness in the video. Yeah, the Matreya project uh, is a lot of things, but. That's what it's Seymour Hoffman carving is. a huge seated oh, Buddha. Yeah, you got to shoot up some And we're talking, they say, they're making like this. this so that it's like 300 feet tall and that it's going to last for uh, 10,000 years. Uh, a thousand years. Where's a thousand gonna years. Be it's going to be in India. Yeah. Wow. So that's really cool. How far are they on it? Uh, they're just in the funding and stage. The they haven't even, they've like just a, bought the land. The statue really. is like a building, technically. It will be a building, yeah. So it yeah. has floors That's cool. inside. Right, it's where you like can do your loving support. kindness chants. <laughs> <and all. laughs> it's like tech support. It's like what? It's a it's giant call center. You know, how can I be of service <laughs> to you? Oh, man. How can I give peace to you? That's Russian. <laughs> how can I give peace to you? Come to the Olympics. That's when you want to buy a wife. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, but that's that's. Um, it is going to be really cool when they get it done, and they they've raised neat. quite a bit of money, millions of dollars so far. I think uh, the only thing they've physically done is buy the land. So mm. it's it's still a pie in the sky kind of thing at the moment because it's going to cost a lot of yeah. money to make it. Uh, but there's a lot of people, including the Dalai Lama, it who are supporting it in CG thus far. Right. Mm-hmm. So okay. what's this million plants and animals genome? Is that the same as the human genome type thing? Except well, yeah, but they're, they they want to collect all of the a mil. Well, not just a million, but they're calling it a million. They want to preserve the genomes of all the plants and all the animals that are on the Earth. So that like uh, Noah's Ark of genomes. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's that's cool. So that John Hammond that. can extract something later on. <laughs> right. <laughs> Welcome to the park. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the arboretum. <laughs> we have skunks. <laughs> hey, we have so what do you think about that, Booger? <laughs> Don't eat me. See. You've been a little I, quiet I lately. That, uh, I, I, I kind of miss the peacocks at the arboretum. Peacock! <laughs> peacock! <laughs> Brain yeah. coming from the ground. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it's okay. Every now and then you see one squished on Michelinda Boulevard. I actually just, never have. You've just made me very sad. I've seen a few. Yeah, I almost hit one once. Uh, so, <laughs> so that's what I happens, man. You see it squished yeah. one. Well, since I walk up there quite often, uh, I see those peacocks all the time. They're pee-fowl. gorgeous, and yeah, I collect yeah, feathers. Yeah. What the squished ones on the road? <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> the roadkill. I, I love road seeing kill. that squished ones yeah. on the road. Yeah. They're yeah. gorgeous. I gotta sit my finger up and say, "Oh." Oh, well, now you can be Australian. <laughs> I know. What well, happened earlier? I just can't. Only when he tries. <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> all right. When he tries, he falls. <laughs> it, it all becomes the prospect. That's, that's as end. bad as like. <laughs> every now and then it just slips out, but like not that. No. <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. <laughs> no, if anyone ever says like, do an impersonation of Jimmy Stewart, it's like. No, <laughs> I can't. But then one day, Every now and then, it's like, it just yeah. comes out. Okay, so what's the Slovlard Bard Pard Project seed? Slovlard seed. Seed. Vault. What is this like? Your, what that, you call your just, sperm? <laughs> it's what they're doing is they're collecting all, as many of the seeds from all the plants and trees, everything. Oh, it's like the Million Project, but it's for for real. For, it's got the physical. They're storing the physical uh, oh, seeds okay. in Svalbard, which is an island. Please say it's... It, Did they it's, do that on Star Trek? <laughs> yeah, I think they, they did. They probably <laughs> mentioned that. Anyway, no, it's Svalbard. Svalbard. I, no, actually, that's date, from uh, the Golden Compass. Uh, the talks USS about Svalbard is on its first mission. <laughs> but uh, Is that a Viking thing? Svalbard. Svalbard! It's, it's a, it's a uh, Scandinavian name. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I can pronounce it, I guess. <laughs> that's that's the Norwegian version of Smallville. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody save me! <laughs> I, I don't know the why that's Norwegian. The guy. <laughs> that's I'm, I'm Philip Furman! Joey's just generic foreign voice. Anyway. <laughs> 
So their per anyway, their purpose is <laughs> that in day. case that uh, <laughs> because of global warming and right, climate right. change, if if all these things die, we will have the seeds know. there to repopulate in the future if we need to. Gotcha. Very nice. Yeah. So that's, it's that's, a, it's a great project, and I'm glad that there was something it. in the Fallout game called the Eden Project, which was kind of the same concept. It's basically like after um, the nuclear war. There's this thing called the Eden Kit, and it basically starts a new garden and can oh. like re um, like the world's turned kind of deserty and everything. Well, in weren't, so, wasn't there a real uh, Eden project in England where they made maybe. these uh, geodesic domes and had gardens and where uh, it's still there actually. You can, it's a tourist place you can go. Hmm. Maybe that's where they get the right got yeah, the idea be. from. Who could knows? Be. Um, it's kind of like terraforming forming the Earth back into Earth. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> terraforming <laughs> Earth into Earth. Yeah. Every time now you move that booger, be... it freaking goes... Now hopefully they'll have instructions. Ah, uh, damn. Uh, it's uh, not like... Yeah, that would suck if it's just a skin. Well, it's like... Nobody knows how to farm, you know. Yeah. Like generations and generations, like what? Are, what are Didn't this happen in Wally? No, they, they packed them with the little nursery tags. You know? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, like water every three to four yeah. days. What? This is from Lowe's. The chia pits. <laughs> chia. 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 Okay, off the rails. I know. Wait, no. We're at we're at an hour, but not. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not the real hour. We're editing out like a good chunk there. But still. <laughs> ch- 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 well, they should they should make a huge project for like Gia Pet. It'd be like the the, the future of Gia Pet, where like the size pet. of the Crazy Horse yes! Monument. Yes, oh. and what grows oh, out of it is like trees, cheese. right? Yeah, right. <laughs> like huge. <laughs> like, like they have to deforest huge part of the tracks of land to shave the guy. They gotta yeah. go, no, don't shave me. Ah! Just think about oh, there it was. Oh, okay. Good job. Moving on. Moving think on. The size of that tape they would use. Rosetta okay. Disc. The Rosetta disc. Oh, I like the Rosetta disc. Kale, you're yeah. telling me they, you can really learn languages from this. Dude, my Rosetta disc. Uh, yes. The Rosetta Stone. Uh, no, no, but the Rosetta disc. You're telling me. Rosetta disc. The, the Risotto. <laughs> Risotto. <laughs> the Risotto was on. Oh, it's <laughs> So the Rosetta disc is what the size of like in your palm. A, it's the size of a, like a compact disc. Yeah. Of a compact disc, and it has on the like the nanoscale, microscopic scale, like thirteen thousand languages or right. words. Word from uh, pages, 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 thirteen thousand pages of different languages on there. Right. So and like if you put it under the microscope or or a digital microscope, right? It's actually you, physically put on the disc. So you don't yeah. need computers to actually. No, see, no, you just no. need to figure out lenses. It's, it's micro printing. It's micro printing. Right. Yeah. right. There so you it's go. there. It's there to preserve well, carving, our, micro carving, all micro the cultures, carving. Okay. Uh, languages, and pieces of work and papers. You know and what stuff that reminded on me a small of? Was the the idea of putting the gold uh, record on Voyager? Yeah. Because like in the future, we should when we send something that's going to eventually leave the solar system, we totally should put something like that on there. So, yeah. You know, any yeah. civilization that could happen upon it. Well, they sort of it. they yeah. sort of did a little bit of that yeah. on it. They, yeah, they did had the, the, the solar system, right. and but the, the rest of it was mathematical. Yeah. You know, we were yeah. talking about when Kale had mentioned this. We were talking about how long something can actually last because th- there was this really cool map that Kale found that was not map a uh, uh, timeline of the future right. showing that in like thousands of years. Everything that we've made now is just going to be gone, right. except that uh, didn't remember it said that uh, the the Mount Rushmore, Mount Rushmore and obviously Crazy last. Horse, right? But then they're going to last tens of thousands. But, of years. Thousands but then you get years. to a million years, and right. it's going to be gone. And right. looking at the history of the Earth, it's like you know things are just going to be gone. Like there could have been a civilization. You know, that's, that's why like a second on the hour clock. Of, right, right, um, right. So there could have been a civilization, Earth's you know, life. a million years ago that we just have no evidence of. But then that's getting daily, and I don't yeah, want to go that yeah. direction. But it's a possibility and that Atlantis something was there, right? Like yeah. But um, what no, about? No. But that's the thing. You send it into space, it's not going to erode because right. there's no weathering in space. Right. Well, so well, one of the things that they're still well, go ahead. still be weathered because there's cosmic rays. Oh yeah, that's there's right. Radiation, yeah. Extreme, yeah. extreme temperatures, Radiate, definitely. One of the cool but you things look at, that, you look at a lot of things that are like asteroids. They don't seem like they get eroded. Uh, in the regular way that something went right. on. Right, regular. A, in an yeah. One of the things they're doing with these, by the way, these discs right now are $20,000 yeah. a piece. <laughs> buy one. But they're digitizing it to yeah. where... Well, you, actually, or, they or did. putting it online so you right. can see You can it. buy a compact disc with all the information so on it. So you can it. see it. And you can buy that I think for it was a, DVD. a reasonable price. I think it was a DVD. Cause it yeah, had that's, a, that's that, what that I was saying. I, I'd like right. to get one. That's very cool. I meant DVD. 10,000-year clock. 
Yes, that uh, now that is a super cool project. So yeah. Awesome. What what? Is there? <laughs> yes, it is. Next subject. Yeah. I thought Daryl was going to jump on that. Well, to watch with a super bad. There's uh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Maybe just describe what it is. Okay. Well, the thing is, is that the it is a a project made by a group called the Long Now Foundation, and the Long Now they want people to think. <laughs> That's what it says in my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> long now, short later. Yeah. Oh. That it. They want people to think in the long term. Yeah. And and that's why they are creating these clocks that will last for ten thousand years. They will run. I think for 10, one of the key things years. is last without maintenance. Because right, right. That's one of the things is that like you know if you want to maintain the Statue of Liberty, you just like kind of keep rebuilding it right, now right. and then. Um, but it won't last that duration of time. But yeah. what they're talking about is like suppose there's an extinction level event. They want this clock to keep running for the next 10,000 right. years on its That's own. why it has multiple power sources. Right. Why? Why do they want it to do that? Well, if you, the, I think one point? of the things that's kind of cool about it is that, first of all, they're thinking toward the future. Like, you know, if something did happen to humanity, we at least leave something for whatever comes later than us to find. Like, it's an archaeological find. And thus far in human history, we've never found running machinery despite what you see in movies like indiana uh -huh. jones and stuff like right. that but you know like every time there's a trap it seems like it's pneumatically powered or something <laughs> yeah. maybe. well that's what there's nothing yeah. like that that we've actually well, found. what's well, cool about so, it is this is a mechanical clock we're talking about yeah and the first one uh, they're they're actually almost finished with uh drilling in this mountain in austin texas around austin texas in the mountains and uh, it's like 200 feet tall where this is going to be installed. And it's a mechanical clock that when people come to visit it, what was it? It's going to take uh, a long hike to hike up to the top to see the actual clock face. Is it going to be um, like digital or is it? No, no, actual? it's mechanical. Extend. Extend. Yeah. Okay. One of us. Is it going to be a squash watch? Squash. How, but how are they making it so it is going to last? I mean, if they're doing something specific that they know it's going to last, yeah, what's it, is that yeah. because it's so big? Or? Okay. One of the things that uh, that is going to power it is they've got uh, three things. One is human uh, energy. So where it's the matrix? Where, what? <laughs> as you walk around, uh, people who visit don't come back. Like, yeah. they go? <laughs> Why are all those people in those little in those little pods? pods You're pods. winding it for the next hour. <laughs> <laughs> where when you go and visit, as you climb up the clock, you're turning turnstiles. Oh, that's cool. And so you're actually uh, pulling the weights up yeah, yeah. so that it will continue to run. So that's one way they're hoping, and probably that's going to power it for almost yeah. all the time. By the way, I didn't want to give the impression that they're, the giant. that they're only looking at like extinction. <laughs> this being something, I mean, it's also for the future generations out, too. You yeah, know I mean? yeah. They're not taking a, a dark view on it necessarily. Um, but one of the things that's really cool about it is that it's an interesting engineering challenge because um, I heard right. Danny Hillis, who's the inventor of many of the mechanisms in the clock. On a podcast I listened to, he mentioned that, like, he said, you know, one thing we don't want is a tick and a talk. Like, you know, most clocks tick, talk, right. in the seconds. He's like, no, because that means noise and that means vibrations, which means materials fatigue, eventually metal failure. So yeah. if this thing's going to last 10,000 years, you don't want anything making a consistent noise, tick, talk, tick, talk. Mm -hmm. So things, instead of, like, making rapid starts and stops in movement, everything has to be designed that it makes a smooth acceleration and into motion and then a smooth deceleration out of motion so that there aren't mm. any sudden movements. And that will make the materials last for 10,000 years. Yeah, they, they definitely uh, have engineered this. And what's cool is, is they've already bought the land in Nevada, in the Nevada mountains, where the second one is going to be. Very cool. So this is going to last 10,000 years, yet my cell phone won't last 10 freaking hours. Right. <laughs> what the hell? But yeah, that's part of what's interesting about yeah. it. It's such a different scale from what we're used to. So the, yeah, all the yeah. engineering on it is pretty breathtaking. Yeah, watch some videos. Uh, right, well, it'd definitely yeah. be in the show notes. A lot of cool stuff. Let's yeah. move on to the future. Ah, uh, so, the future? Uh, right. Echo. Let, let's <laughs> talk, let's talk about the uh, space Time elevator ball. and the Starship Enterprise for real. Let's start with the space elevator. Anybody who's a, a fan of this podcast knows that we're all into space elevators. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. baby. Dude, because long it's, you know why? Because it's, it's such a long ride, you can just do it the whole time. 
Yeah, I think you probably play all our podcasts just like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I wonder when they get, get up to the top, they've k- killed themselves. I wonder what the elevator music is going to be in a space elevator. <laughs> <laughs> It'll no. play, probably be Yanni. No, no, no. no, 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 no they'll just play the final countdown the whole way. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> 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 was like, this is 10 hours later. Yeah. Uh, is that going to be like a real elevator for <laughs> you? Ten hours later, there's this blood on the <laughs> someone's head exploded. Yeah, so everybody's standing there and they're not talking to each other they're the whole time. The ceiling, <laughs> the ground. So the space elevator is going to be an elevator which is uh, going to take us into space, basically. But it's going right. to take you know, like it's basically a machine's going to be climbing up a ribbon up to space, and the, it's going to be about what is it? Is uh, it a twenty thousand ribbon? It's going to be a shiny, pretty ribbon, like brainstorm. Ooh, brainstorm ribbon! ribbon! <laughs> Decorative freedom tape! <laughs> anyway, um, it's going to be like 20,000 <coughs> mi- Is it 20,000 miles, I think? And and how it, long it's going to need to be? And it's going yeah. to and it's gonna take a long time to get it. Hey, through. that's a long time. But, nah. but the good part is it will cost hardly nothing, you know, once it's well, made. Well, wait, well that's, that's the whole point wait, is to get things up into space. The opposite for, of that uh, is feet. totally everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My God, that's expensive. <laughs> so I just said it will so cost the hardly the nothing. Will be connected up to oh, a satellite okay. or a space well, station. Well, yeah, <laughs> the and, the, and they will oh, start okay, building right. like a space station at the end of it, so that the, it'll be the counterweight and it's for in synchronous it. Synchronous orbit, or and, and it will move with the Earth as it, uh, the Earth uh, rotates, and it'll stay geosynchronous. Right in next to the direct space. TV satellite. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, yeah, so it's going to be really cool because it's going to bring down the cost of accessing space. Mm-hmm. It's really going to bring it down. Like right now, it takes it costs like ten thousand dollars a pound to get things into space. Yeah. With a space elevator, it'll initially bring it down to a hundred dollars a pound to get things in space, and eventually, particularly because you don't have to pack all the fuel on board. Right. right? Exactly. They're, they're planning to beam the energy. Maybe not teleport the energy, but yeah, beam it. <laughs> beam it. <laughs> beam it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, wait. Then why would you need the if you can beam, what? <laughs> no, don't even go there. <laughs> you, 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 you Were couldn't you complete your thought. We're moving on. <laughs> Have you seen the cartoon of uh, Day in the Life of Chief O'Brien on the Enterprise? How boring his life was. Oh, I saw that cart. That's horrible. Oh wow! <laughs> he's just standing it. there. <laughs> that's right, because he's right. like. Anybody dead. want to be beamed? <laughs> <laughs> and then he beams. He he, he beams Tasha hey, naked hey. into the. Yeah. Hey, you know, he probably just stood around beaming himself the yeah. whole time. So. <laughs> He's moaning to himself. Speaking of which, I can bring the space <laughs> Kale that. and I came up with the idea of the Starship Enterprise a while back where We've, it would just yeah, be a ship that. that would go around the solar system, but it, it's the idea is it would be like the Starship Enterprise where people would live on it, and it would explore the solar system for, you know, five years or whatever. And just like most things, other people have thought about it, too. You know what? It was I, amazing. You know and, what I don't uh, like about like the, in the 60s. Starship Enterprise idea? Like, let's actually build it? Because it's like... I think you should start a design for a gargantuan project like that based on what actually works in this engineering. Well, no, we're well, not that's s- what they're doing. Yeah, we're not saying no. We're saying it as a concept. The idea of the five-year voyage in a place okay, you're living. Okay, we're not saying okay. we're not saying build it to look. No, the but same. some people are literally putting on the internet like we want to build the USS Enterprise in full scale and use it as a ship. Yeah, yeah they're like, doing it in their garage. It would be cool and, and if it could end up looking like yeah. that. But you're right; it has to be the built same, from what works. The same yeah, people, yeah. Exactly. Uh, group of people. Now they're changing they want to build it on the on earth so that you can just go it as a tourist place oh, okay. and, and See, they're stupid. not they're not the ones that right but that's but the, that's the real the real group, yeah, uh, yeah. build the enterprise those people actually want to build a working a ship. spaceship that will travel around the solar system and and do missions starting with probably going to the moon and then going to Mars and well, then going to Venus. Wasn't it kind of like going that way with like the the one way to one way ticket to Mars thing that's going? Well, on? that's yeah. Oh, uh, do anybody want to extend? Yeah, I'll extend. Okay. Um, the the thing is. Uh, Full size Death Star, fully functional. Uh, it would end all war. You know why? Because whatever country controls it would be like, "Don't piss us off. We'll blow the entire planet yeah. up." Yeah, no kidding, right? Oh, we're doing that with You're nuclear presuming nuclear that missiles, anyways. Basically, having doesn't want to watch the world burn. Well, that's true, but most of us probably don't want the world to burn, right? Uh, I, I'm, I'm in favor of non-burning. Uh, you know, I'm All in favor of non-burning. Say aye. 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 <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that depends um, on how many virgins I get when I burn. The eyes oh. have it. <laughs> well, he does Are they male or female? He does have a point. Oh, maybe yeah. they're not virgins because you might be burning afterwards. Dude, who really wants virgins right. anyway? They don't know what they're doing. Well, that's yeah, the whole point. Who want? I, uh, I you want like a slut, a slutty broad who Kinda knows like. what the hell she's doing? Yeah, that's what you want, right? But yeah, um, you no, that's what you want. I, I'm, I'm not into sloppy ten thousands. We are. <laughs> hey, if she's that good, I don't uh, care yeah, how many yeah. people Just check your with. resume. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> give me references. What? Well, yeah, give me references. That's right. So, def- oh, you've been in the Eiffel Tower. Nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and a minivan. Death Star. <laughs> oh man. Wow. Death. So, Death Star. Hot dog in the hallway. Hot dog. Hot dog. <laughs> hot diggity dog. What are we at? Yeah, where are we done? Where it's still on here if you want to talk. Oh, where it extends. That's right. Yeah, about the extending. Enterprise and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. I, thought that, I thought Death Star was on there. Like no, 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 no. Daryl added that. I thought but, it uh, <laughs> yes, by Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> you know, Booger, we reattached you and everything. You didn't get better. Yeah, it's, it's like you're still, still talking to us on your phone or something. Yeah. <laughs> Every time you chime in on this episode, it's going to be. <laughs> Do you have yeah, a computer? Thank you. thank you. All right, now moving on. Where are we at, Joey? On to. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. I love. I love it. His answer is yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. The O'Neill Space Colony. What the hell's the O'Neill Space Colony? Basically, it's a, uh, 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 like a big bicycle spoke. That will be spinning in space just to picture it, and it will create yeah. artificial gravity so that you can live on the side of the inside of the Halo. spoke. What? Halo. Halo. Halo? Oh, I don't know. I don't play Halo. Discworld. So. Discworld. That's yeah. In a lot of definitely. So what's the right? So it's why is it called O'Neill? Is it uh, because he's kind of Gerard O'Neill is the guy who kind of came up with all these cool ideas. Of uh, building space stations. You remember and, Mrs. O'Neill? And remember we talked about the Lagrange points in a previous podcast. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's the one who kind of alive. said that's where we need to put these things uh-huh. so that they will stay there. Right. So, um, are they starting this? Anybody? No. Or is it just an idea? No, this is future. This yeah. is all. This is all pie in the sky. Yeah, future exactly. Utopia. Well, but like yeah, but like the Enterprise. Yeah, thing. that's right, <laughs> Daryl. The Enterprise <laughs> thing has some some people, you know, looking into starting an organization. Right. Does any organization looking into this, or is it just you know like the first millennial found? No, no, no. maybe not. <laughs> no, <laughs> at this point, space it's, uh, there aren't uh, reputable organizations uh, actually trying to build this. The what the reputable companies are doing, like uh, SpaceX, they're trying to get up. Our, into space around us to build like hotels, space hotels, so that we can. Uh, Sorry, I was <laughs> knuckle cracker. <laughs> so that we can have tourism up to space. Well, yeah, that's the next thing is that I think space tourism is going to be happening pretty soon. And, uh, you, you know, space hotels. Yes. Some people have paid, um, what is it, Virgin Atlantic? They've mm-hmm. paid for their space flights in Bitcoin. Oh, really? Yeah. Very they cool. They prepaid them, you know, because... Virgin to, Galactic. That's is it Virgin, virgin Galactic? Galactic. Yeah, that's yeah. what it was. Same yeah. virgins. There's your virgins! <laughs> They're in the Galactic. You see, you can do virgins for Bitcoin. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you can do virgins. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think that's going... Depending on how those space flights go with Galactic vir- Virgin... Galactic <laughs> Virgin. <laughs> okay, new porno. Galactic Virgin. <laughs> Galactic Virgin! <laughs> From Galoo. All right, yeah. so... <laughs> depending on... Yeah, From Pookie. Depending from, from Galoo. <laughs> <laughs> Depending how that goes, uh, it will be you know space hotels are the next step. If if space uh, is really the new tourist destination and places like Virgin Galactic can really start making money off of it, space hotels. Dude, think of the right. view. Well, yeah, the, every every room. Geez. The Russians. Yeah. Oh yeah, what are, are the Russians the doing? The Russians are actually saying they are in the process of of making a space hotel. Would you trust a Russian space hotel? Hey, I mean, <laughs> we're 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 trusting us with. Uh, with I will them say, to get us up to the well, for one thing, station. no ho- no homosexuals can go because Russia doesn't like. Oh, that's right. I will <laughs> say this though, Putin, if he was the guy in charge of, well, first of all, his name, yeah. Yeah. Well, the thing is, is a guy named Putin shouldn't be against gay. No, no, yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> but second of all, he's like the ultimate James Bond villain. If he was like the president of my country, I'd do whatever the hell he wanted to do. You know, the people over there are scared of that guy, and they should be. Like, <laughs> I just picture the guy, the dude from uh, Armageddon, 
who was in the uh, the rover with uh, I forget which guy name and it was like uh, uh, Bruce Willis or, yeah. or Ben Affleck. Yeah, he was whatever. on he was on the asteroid. Vladimir, uh, yeah. what's his name? Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, yeah, we can do it. Let's <laughs> <Arnold. laughs> no. thing about what, what's making me think about the awesome view of Earth is um, it, it's described really well in the book Contact because. Um, Ellie goes up to visit the guy um, that winds up funding a lot of the stuff later on, the guy who's dying from cancer. But in, in the book, he's actually on a space station. Mm-hmm. So she goes up to visit him as part of her like pre-training before she's going to go through the machine. And um, it just really well describes what the view of Earth is like, how it's like life-changing just to wow. see it that one time. So, yeah, I oh, think yeah. that would be Not awesome. And, you know, if, especially if you could take your honey up there and, you know, you're just like, hey, honey, look at the earth. I would give you all of that. Are you, talking, we'll about, suck on all are you talking to your <laughs> penis right now? <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, hey honey, comes, what's going on? It always comes back to the penis, doesn't it? Yeah, usually. Yeah, well, well, yeah. If you're gonna push someone Seriously, though, if you want to get so done well, chips. take your girl to the freaking space hotel. All right, and then <laughs> let's go make the next generation so they can be on a ship. Generation ships, which would right. just be... Hey, we send them out. As we go farther and farther into the pie in the sky, yeah. we're talking about generation ships, which is sending a... Uh, That's like the Enterprise D. Yeah, well, <laughs> out of an asteroid. I was talking asteroid. Enterprise Double D earlier. So, well, is, it, so is it like okay, sending what? a ship out and then it just keeps going Anyone off each generation this? of people? Are we extending? Are we extending, Paul? Sure. Okay. Got it. Go. So... All right. It can go. You just have generations of people. They die and live. Well, that's through. why they call generation ships, and and basically these they'll yeah, the probably be built first... out of uh, asteroids or uh, or maybe even comets. But to be clear, the first people Wait, the ship on the ship will be asteroid? long dead before it reaches the generation or the destination. Again, exactly. Anyway. So the exactly. thing is, like, if you're going on a, a journey that's going to take ten thousand years, you'll be on like the you know two hundred. Thousandth, I don't know, whatever generation. Yeah. But not if we no. reach the singularity <laughs> and we're all living for Right, anyway. right. So okay, so so I think generation ships are a great idea, especially if there's no you know death. We cure aging and everything because then, well, yeah, then we run out of well, room. Well, wouldn't necessarily have yeah. to be a generation ship. Then, then it would just be that. a ship ship. Yeah, a ship ship <laughs> with a bunch of old fogies on there. <laughs> no, we wouldn't no. be old. We reverse well, age okay, ourselves. Right. Okay, we'd it be would like be a ship, and young, badass, hot looking smoocherama. We'll we'll like, no, it would be a ship full of computer again, haven't you? hard drives. Oh yeah, because we it would just be the brain stored there, and when you arrive, you'd have the machines build your bodies and. Then your bro- minds oh, would be you're in just talking Optimus Prime saved on a floppy disk. <laughs> That's, That's right. What you're talking about right there. Uh, <laughs> we backed them up to an eight-inch floppy. <laughs> See Transformers. But we need TCP/IP to transfer it to another yeah, computer. He's talking about his floppy disk, though. He is. Yeah. Did you hear him talk about yeah. his honey? A few. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't. It ain't floppy. <laughs> <laughs> it better be right now because if it's not, well, uh, there are times. Especially after the extends. <laughs> Thirty-two. No. <laughs> Gig? Uh. Uh. Bite? So Bite. That, so that we That's what we put in her. Okay, moving on. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, all cannot come soon. Terraforming Mars, which is an awesome idea. And I, ever since I've read the book Red Planet, I've just loved the idea. Total Recall. It kind of sucked in Total Recall. But yeah, there yeah, was. Total Recall. Yeah! <laughs> Total Recall! Ah! Ah! <laughs> I at least remember when he pulled the thing Get your ass to Mars! Get your ass to Mars! Uh, but no, terraforming. <laughs> Pull that thing out of his nose, dude. Oh, oh man. Uh-huh. That looks so painful. Like, if that happened in real life, his nose would have been totally broken and misfigured. And <laughs> Oh, yeah. Well, there's that one thing where, like, the drill thing rips off half his, like, yeah. upper arm. And yeah. then the next scene, he's all fine. So, okay, <laughs> yeah. Like, they're like, quick, put a towel over your head. But in real terraforming, which is yeah. not going to happen from an alien yeah, like device in a few seconds. Or- uh, in the book Red Planet, it had... Uh, it smells like Slurpee. What, what they're saying is to crash... Uh, what? <laughs> it's to crash uh, comets into uh, Mars because basically... To what's, give it water. To give it the water yeah. it's missing and the atmosphere. And CO2, I believe. Yes, and yeah. so uh, it, it'll take hundreds of years, but it should still turn it into a red yeah, and blue planet. Yeah, but they see the CO2 would be good for any plants you want to foster mm-hmm. there, and then they would produce the oxygen you need right. for... But uh, animal life. what's interesting is that um, that because Olympus Mons, the mountain, is so tall on Mars that the atmosphere would actually be a little bit below the summit. 
Oh, really? Wow. So if you get on top of Olympus Mons, you still would be in space. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Well, well, except the you die. What about the Genesis Project? Genesis Project? Oh, from Star Trek. Yeah, that's right. That was where uh, they sent the little. That went to thing. shit. So, <laughs> oh, yeah, right. it didn't work. Wait, which movie was that in? That, that was, was two. Was that was two. two. It was Con. spread. Con? It was yeah. spread between two. It's right, two. Right, it's right. than three. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah. All right. Now uh, I get you. Uh, they what's the, it back in like generations or something? Didn't they temporarily? I don't know. I what's the expanded Zod- Goldilocks zone? <laughs> oh, it says Venus and Moon's expanded Goldilocks zone. What's what's up with that? Kim? Well, mm. it was something I read recently, and I sort of misinterpreted it, but. Essentially, what it is is that they're saying, they're because of extremophiles, they're realizing that life can exist in a wider range yeah. than they previously thought. So what they're saying is, is that uh, the Goldilocks zone is where life can exist, and so what they're doing is they're expanding it so that uh, you could actually include like some of the moons of yeah. of uh, Saturn. Yeah, well, exactly. What, the, what the proof of this is is um, animals that live in deep sea vents. Um, right, right, like and that's why they're thinking they, right. it, it, it'll expand on both so sides. Because the, third, the Venus is too cold within the temperature hot, and the lack right. of light are both things that we weren't expecting to find anything living there. Okay, silence, so. everybody. Booger, go and say something first. <laughs> say something first. That doesn't mean anything, and then start talking. So go like. Blah, blah, blah. Tower. Hey, did you just did you just say s- sea bass? No, no, sea vents. Oh, sea vents. <laughs> like, what, 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 does Jonah living in a sea bass? What the hell is sea this? There will be life on other beans. planets because we have sea bass. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, Booger, we figured out the problem. You need to say something that means nothing first and then just keep talking and the rest of your... And, and we actually hear you. We're going to hear the rest of your speak. It's just when you start talking... Oh, you know, okay. Then from now on, my, my code word will be Eiffel Tower. Okay. okay that, that works. Very good. Very good. So, uh, the, uh, let's see, sea bass. No, <laughs> Stop with the sea bass. Oh, by the way, I want you to look up Goldilocks well, see, zone when he's on talking about urban uh, uh, Europa. Europa. Yeah. That's going to be like his pedophile <laughs> minivan. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, yeah, you told the me. slick this. dick, yep. You to- oh, you, gotta, yeah. you gotta park in the Goldilocks zone before you park <laughs> oh. in the minivan. Okay, Booger, you missed the, the, the minivan from Urban What's Dictionary. That? It's the multi mystery van or whatever. The or mystery machine? Mystery yeah, machine. yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> the Scooby Doo. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, what I was saying is Europa is really exciting. Yeah. What Paul was talking about is because. Is that the ocean one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's that's... an actual uh, liquid ocean. Oh, Europa, yeah. Under the ice. Yeah. Which is being heated by the pressure of the gravity. Of the planet right. or was, the right. movement. That from was Jupiter. Linda kissing Kale. We're not doing that here. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. Uh, yeah, me too. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, the Russians now are saying they you. they want to go there before America. Well, yeah, we we've had a plan to get a drill to go right, like, right, and, and and how they they it, and they Arnold were heated and burned down it. through. <laughs> There's some good plans from us. Get to Europa. But the yeah, but the Russians actually now they kind of want to do it before us. So there might be another space race. Space race back uh, home, baby. Going to Europa. You know, when they do things like cool. that, they really have to make sure that there's not uh, prior. Um, that the thing, the space rover is very clean. The space brought, rubber is very clean. That brought no what the bacteria hell from Earth. <laughs> the rover. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because sometimes you get false positives, like, well, you know, like hey, look, there's a little protozoa on Mars. That spread it herpes across the universe. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, if you're herpes if you're across virgin, the universe. <laughs> well, Kirk did it anyway. That's what so. Galaxy Virgin is doing. So anyway, <laughs> the next and final topic is going to be massive online virtual worlds. This is coming off the internet, the idea that, uh, you know, the internet's what we created. Oh God, we had to bring up Second Life again. But, <laughs> well, that was just an example. But the idea that we're going to be... I, I was wondering if, if Second Life was going to end up coming into this. I full tower! He did it, he was fine! <laughs> okay, was okay, dude. Okay. Well, you don't know if he said it, because he might have said it. And oh, it didn't go through, yeah. so... Oh, yeah. Dude. <laughs> so, people... Did you uh, see recently... The um, Matrix. <laughs> Oculus Rift. <laughs> Holy crap, we're gone. What's the MMORPG that's out in space? I forget what it was. Oh, Somebody just lost like $500,000 worth of of uh, like real money Ugh. work. Like into some game. dollars? No, what they did was, I forget what game it was, but it was, um, oh, check the oh, show notes. Oh, gosh, darn. And, I think um, I know which one you're talking Eve? Eve I think it was Eve, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And what the guy did was uh, every month uh, his account would be renewed. 
Mm-hmm. And he had this they had this huge like like fortress and like protection and whatever they had set up and something happened, his card got cancelled or whatever. God. And so he missed a payment and so that section of their galaxy or whatever didn't exist anymore, like the protection was gone. Mm-hmm. And so they all got attacked by everybody. And oh it took my them gosh. like hours and hours. Like this was like months and years of like what they put into this. Uh-huh. And it's something like, like five hundred grand it? or fifty grand or something oh, of, wow. of of the actual time. And what they raided like, it or something? They just like were just they were attacking their, their <laughs> sector and stuff. Oops. And it's, wow. And to get it back that's is, so funny. is like well, that's, Man, that's real life for you. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's like, yeah. That's what makes Very like a virtual space kind of interesting is when you have real stake in it. You yeah. Know? Like, uh, if death in one of these games is permanent, then you really care about if you die or not. Yeah. But right. if you instantly respawn, who cares? Well, the thing and the thing that makes me think that these virtual worlds might be getting closer to becoming something more uh, that people want to do is the the thing you're talking about, the, the Oculus. Mm-hmm. The fact that the guy had it on and it's the simple, easy, not even a game, and he's like, I don't want to take this off. Right. You know, it's so the virtual helmet that's finally is so well made, or goggles or whatever. Well, ne- Neelai Patel from The Verge, he said when he was wearing it. He caught a glimpse from under the visor. It's a, by the way, it's a VR mask that has very good head tracking, including positioning, and it's very responsive. So you don't have the usual lag that's headache-inducing and everything. But he said that under the visor for a split second, he viewed his own hands, and he felt disembodied from them. He's like, "What are my hands doing here? Because I'm not in my body right now." I often oh, wonder that. Yeah. What are my hands yeah. doing here? Yeah, <laughs> I think that pretty much every morning when I wake up. But uh, that's the whole thing. If, if, if And he said he didn't want to take it off, right? Because yeah, yeah, that yeah. was so cool. And that's what's right. going to happen. I mean, look how much we get stuck with the with the uh, iPads or the c- uh, computers in front of us playing off. games. <laughs> if it was virtual, man, we'd have that thing on all the freaking right. time. Well, and yeah, I, what I want is Highlander. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I want a Highlander world where Toyota? you can like, teleport into it and then actually play Highlander. Well, and the real. thing is, if it's if it's Chuck real enough, yeah, then, yeah. then it might be okay to be in there. You see, that's the future of Wally, man. though. That's why, you know, you're on life support in, like, your floating chair, and you're, like, this obese oh, yeah. thing. And, and you spend all your time Eiffel in the virtual world. Yes. Well, the thing, yeah, you to, yeah, that sort of phenomenon has actually been well established just with reading books. You know, people will read a novel for hours on end, and when the book's over, you're sitting here thinking you're still in the world, in the world you're just reading about. So yeah. this sort of... Concept is not new. That's a good point, and also, and every new media has its detractors. It's right. kind of like, right. a, uh, what's the word for it? Luddites. Yeah. Luddites. Luddites that are going to go yeah. crazy with it. But the thing is, I think it might, won't be like Wally, where we're going to get overweight because by then the science is going to be so much that we yeah. won't need to worry about our bodies because we'll have uh, maintenance that keeps our bodies. But in we won't like, have to exercise. What more. happens to the real world? Is the real world just completely roboticized and we don't contribute to the reality? We well, maybe the real world. The virtual so world. Well, maybe the real world doesn't matter anymore. What about that? Yeah. What if everything well, the thing is, is in just the virtual world? It's just weird to think about. It. Yeah, it's I know it's weird for us because we. Right. Only what, it, it, what you're saying really is what becomes real then. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe the real world isn't real. Tower. I'd go around and show. Well, you have to realize that the real world still, it still comes into play here because the real world is what is interacting to to perpetuate the virtual world. So eventually you've got to take your, your goggles off in order to have sex to have children. Otherwise, you become nothing but a bunch of Quakers. Uh, it can be and automated. Next- just, yeah. Ro- yeah, in vitro robot comes over and, you know, and spends five minutes you. with you. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Boop, boop, boop. Suck, 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 suck. Well, and to the point. Well, <laughs> hey, think about the Pixar movie about in vitro bot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I can't even get it. <laughs> Dude, dude, I can't get that out of my head now. Oh, wow. <laughs> Blow it. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay, I think it's time to end on that. Oh. And hey, what was the last section, anyway? Well, well that, that was it. The last section. Oh, that was it. That okay, was so it. the timer's done? Yeah. yeah we're done. Okay. Well, we, cool. we have that the was, conclusion now. That uh, was it. monumental. Yes, it was. It was. I have to say, this was monument. Not that's what Blowy one. said. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily in a. This is gonna. This this episode's gonna have to be um, closely looked at before we publish it. But, <laughs> but I think it'll be fine. I think yeah, it'll be really it's good. Be and it, and it's been really good to have Booger back. We edited out all the best moments. Yay, Booger! Yeah. Yeah. Please join us more often, and next time, do it. Join us on your phone. Damn it. <laughs> oh, wait, you're on your phone. On your computer. Yeah. Your computer and not your phone, because it doesn't work very well unless you Eiffel Tower it. Uh, well, I guess I probably would have had to Eiffel Tower it even on the computer, because it was still that lag then, too, right? 
Well, your phone's not well, as powerful. The thing is, your, your voice is garbled more than half the time. Yeah, it's not like yeah. it used to be. So. But we like seeing you. Yeah. Okay. Next you're, time, you're pretty. Okay. Okay, uh, so uh, we are done with monumental projects. We're gonna have a lot of links on the website, which you're probably looking at right now. So, because there's a lot of a lot of things that we talked mm-hmm. about. Yeah. All right, so let's talk about next week. Paul, it is, oh, oh, dude, Daryl, oh, snap! Did you learn your lesson. It's gonna stick too. Oh man. <laughs> okay, so Dar- uh, Paul, Paul, is your topic for next week? <laughs> yeah, I got a topic for next week. What uh, is that topic? What is that topic? Well, wow, this topic is gonna be awesome because. I've missed out on a lot of them because they've turned into let's do this when Paul's not here. <laughs> We're going to do a random ram <laughs> random ram what the hell's it random called? Random rambles. rambling. Ah, yes. Scheduled. <laughs> Scheduled random, random rambling. rambling. All right. So let's nice. all go to our list. Yeah, so go to the list and, and make uh, sure cool. one with topics. Paul. And uh um, okay. can you make one for Booger? Yeah. What? Can we make a list for Booger so he can put stuff in? Um, or yeah, a, we can add that on yes, there. We can. Yeah, so no someone problem. do that for him so we know All right. what's going on. Well, we got it. Okay. All right, so that's going to be next mm. week. Woo! That was awesome! Yeah! Good, good choice, Paul. I like that. Thank you. Good, Very good. good. Show. And I knew you were going to do it because Kim already told me. Nah, this, you told Kim. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're talking about topics. I'm like, oh man, I need to do a random rambling. Yeah, <laughs> and I thought, that was an ex- <laughs> so I thought that was an excellent idea. <laughs> cool. All right, I'm Joey Shamble. Not Paul Hottinger. Kale Anderson. And I'm Daryl George. You can find me at George.com. And uh, we got this other guy here. I don't know who I Eiffel am. Tower. Eiffel Tower. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Robert oui, oui. on his... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, hey. yeah. Eiffel Tower. <laughs> oh, just like the sun. Just don't wee wee on the Eiffel Tower. <laughs> oh, like you song. blow it up and Superman come and save a girl. Oh, 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 nuclear weapon. Or Cobra Commander blows it up. I don't know. Yeah. Wow. That is, is wild to see that, that one hour and 35 minutes on there. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Cobra! We do have like 20 minutes to cut though. So yeah, that's good. true. All right. Thanks, Curtis, everybody. Bye. We will see you next Bye. week. And please, Bye. Daryl, don't cut any more farts. Woo. Thanks for listening. You can now stop screaming at the open air. Listeners should put their minds back in their upright positions and resume traditional thinking. Find us on imrambling.com for access to all of our weekly ramblings, show notes, general discussions, and any projects from Incoherent Ramblings. Like us on Facebook and rate us on iTunes. So long, and thanks for all the fish. Um, I'll make a note. Um, Uh, At zero 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 one. (laughs) I had had to get get it out of the way. That's right. (laughs) That's fantastic. (laughs) Beep. (laughs) Hey, what's up, Burger? So, um, what? I don't know how this is going to work, if it's going to work, but I thought I'd give it a shot. Well, we're, we can hear you. We can hear you. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're mid-episode. <laughs> here. Hey, hey. Well, let's plug in. Oh, here. Um, Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. We oh. might edit some of this out, you know? Maybe. <laughs> okay, Daryl, now it's your turn. <laughs> Get the cotton spray. Did you spray. just fart? Oh, dude! <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh, this goes oh, in the that's outside. A, that's a question of a week, all right. Oh. How unlucky are we? I killed the podcast. Underneath this blanket. Oh, my thing. God. Whoa.